today we are going to talk about white blood cells leukocytes right white blood cells which are present in the blood they are basically divided into three five categories white blood cells but primarily they are divided into two categories yeah what are the two basic categories of white blood cells granulocytes and non granulocytes or agranulocytes granulocytes and non granulocytes or agranulocytes non granulocytes now do you think non granulocyte don't have granules or do they have granules they have, they have granules but they are non specific granules actually those white blood cells which have specific granules they are called granulocyte and those white blood cells which do not have specific granules they are called non granulocytes non granulocytes are further divided into three types of cells and non granulocytes they are divided into two types of cells right now granulocytes the neutrophils the eosinophils and there are basophils and non granulocytes or agranulocytes they are monocytes and there are yes lymphocytes right now granulocyte how do you differentiate neutrophils from other neutrophils have nucleus which is multi lobed right two to four lobes of nucleus multi lobed nucleus neutrophils characteristically have and with that it has granules some granules which are staining eosinophilic they take the acidic dyes and there are some granules which take the basic dyes neutrophils but when we talk about these are neutrophil and because neutrophils have different morphologies of nuclear material in different cells because in some neutrophil you have two lobes and some neutrophil you have three lobes and some neutrophil nucleus has four lobes so we also call polymorpho nuclear neutrophils morphology mean structure polymorpho nuclear neutrophils or simply some people call them polymorphs polymorphs right poly mean many morpho mean structure the many different structures of neutrophils nucleus seen in different new neurophils right then there is eosinophil eosinophil is a cell as if he is having what is this i always feel somehow they are having the glasses bilobed nucleus classically eosinophils have bilobed nucleus and eosinophils have the granules specific granules which are stained by eosinophilic dyes or acidic dyes right the granules they are specific granules take which dye acidic acidic dyes eosinophils red color lovers eosinomin basic dyes or eosinomin red or pink eosinophils fills mean loving Sinophils, cells which love the red color because the granules take red color. Then they are basophils. Their nucleus is also somewhat bilobed, right? Nuclear material, but the granules are staining. Yes, blue. Blue for basophils for basic dyes. Basic dye, blue dyes, right? So these have. blue granules the specific granules take the blue stain easily or basic dyes easily right then we have non granulocytes or agranulocytes 
एक रेनोसाइट्स क्लासिकली यू मस्ट नो फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल व्हाट इज दिस मोनोसाइट मोनोसाइट्स हैव ग्रेन्यूल्स बट दीस ग्रेन्यूल्स आर नॉन स्पेसिफिक ग्रेन्यूल्स लाइक लाइसोसोम्स राइट देन देयर आर लिम्फोसाइट्स एंड लिम्फोसाइट्स हैव अ वेरी लार्ज न्यूक्लियस एंड वेरी लिटिल साइटोप्लाज्म दिस इज अ वेरी स्पेसिफिक वे टू रिकॉग्नाइज द लिम्फोसाइट्स Actually, as a good doctor, you must be able to recognize these cells just by their simple structure. If you see in any inflammatory tissue, inflamed tissue, white cells with multiple lobes, they must be neutrophils. If you see white blood cell with bilobed, most probably eosinophils, especially when they are staining with the red color or eosinophilic dye, right? And bilobed nucleus with blue staining dye, uh, you can say granules. This is basophils, right? and then kidney shaped cells uh, kidney shaped nucleus with the white cells and these cells are having non specific granules these are monocytes and lymphocytes are very peculiar that they have a very large nucleus and very little cytoplasm is that right now when you compare these cells the cinophil and then there are yes let me write their names basophils and then there are monocytes and there are lymphocytes right now uh, let's talk about there is a concept we use a term called tlc total total leukocyte count and then there is another term which is used commonly dlc differential leukocyte count total leukocyte count mean that in 1 ml of the blood or 1 cubic millimeter of the blood what are the total number of white cells right if we take one drop of blood and drop of blood is just 1 uh, cubic millimeter or 1 ml blood if you take 1 ml blood how many white cells are present in a normal person's 1 ml of the blood yes that is total leukocyte count so what is it normally it is somewhere between 4000 to 11000 right 11000 white blood cells per cubic millimeter am i clear to everyone right that if you take a healthy persons one drop of blood which is about 1 ml drop of blood then white blood cell count should be somewhere between 4000 to 11000 and it's important to remember if in 1 ml of the blood if white blood cell count is less than 4000 this is pathological or if it is more than 11000 that is also pathological when it is less than 4000 we call the condition leukopenia penia mean less leuco mean white cells white cells are less than normal and when white blood cells per ml of the blood are more than 11000 we call it yes leuco yes cytosis they are called leukocytosis is that right so this was something about tlc that in one drop of blood one ml of the blood how many total white blood cells should be there but when we talk about dlc dlc is differential leukocyte count then you are talking about that out of 100 white cells what is the percentage of the neutrophils which are how, what is the percentage of eosinophils and so and so forth right the most abundant white cells are neutrophils most abundant white cells are neutrophils so when we talk about dlc differential leukocyte count then neutrophil percentage in a normal person is somewhere between 40 to 75% in a normal person blood neutrophil count should not be less than 40% and not more than 75% this is percentage is that right now if your neutrophil count is less than 40% we call it neutropenia what we call it neutropenia if neutrophil count is less than 40% we call it neutro 
pinea and if white blood uh, neutrophil count is more than 75 percent what we call it this condition if it is more than 75 percent yeah what you call it neutrophilia body is in love with neutrophil then increasing their number neutrophilia this type of situation is seen especially in acute inflammation neutrophils as I will mention later they are also called the cells of acute inflammation acute mean uh, recent onset inflammation of short duration right in uh, short duration duration inflammation neutrophils become very active and in the blood also neutrophil count goes up is that right because many neutrophils are released from bone marrow stores right then eosinophils the classical example causes of neutrophilia is who will tell me pyogenic infection infections which produce pus like staphylococcal infections streptococcal infections pus producing organism produce neutrophilia right then there are eosinophils and eosinophils normal count is somewhere between 1 to 6 percent eosinophils they are less abundant and if number of eosinophil is more than 6 percent right then we see there is eosinophilia there is eosinophilia classically eosinophilia is seen in your blood when there are parasitic infections or allergic situations in allergy and in parasitic infections eosinophils become more in the blood and we say more than 6 percent and we say that patient is having eosinophilia right then basophils basophils are the least abundant cell in the blood sometimes even out of 100 cells you don't find there's any basophil right so we say they are usually two to uh, zero to two percent in the blood but if basophils are more than two percent in the blood the condition is called basophilia then condition is called Basophilia. Basophilia is seen especially in allergic reactions, especially type 1 hypersensitivity reactions. Basophilia, allergic reaction, right? Immediate type of hypersensitivity or allergy. Then we come to monocytes. Monocytes normal percentage should be somewhere between 2 to 10 percent in the blood out of white cells. Is that right? If you have 100 white cells, the most abundant should be neutrophils. Is that right? And monocytes should be somewhere between 2 to 10 percent. If they are more than 10 percent, the condition should be called? Yes, mono? Here, not philia. Monocytosis. Monocytosis. Medical science like life is not so easy. Right? Monocytosis. If someone has, for example, 20 percent monocyte in the... Uh, white blood cell percentage so we call it monocytosis 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 is classically seen in chronic infections in chronic infection long term infections monocytosis for example person who is suffering with tuberculosis he will have in the blood monocytosis but someone who has sore throat due to staphylococcus he will have neutrophilia someone who has allergy right he may have synophilia as well as basophilia someone who has parasitic infection in, in her blood or his blood uh, eosinophils will be high is that right then we come to lymphocytosis lymphocytosis are said to be there normally what is the percentage of lymphocytes lymphocytes are uh, should be normally present 15 to 40 percent in the blood but when they are count of the lymphocytes become more than 40 percent the condition is called if it is more than 40 percent it is called lympho cytosis lymphocytosis is classically seen in viral infections yes in viral infections and also in chronic infections chronic infections if there's viral infection regardless viral infection is acute or chronic you will develop lymphocytosis right or in chronic infection. Now it's so easy. If I ask you that someone has acute infection uh, by an organism which is producing pus, which which cells in the blood will be more neutrophilia will be there, right? But if I say someone has chronic 
inflammation in the body, which cells will be high? Monocytosis and lymphocytosis will be seen. If I say someone has acute viral infection, classically lymphocytosis is there. If I say someone has allergic uh, reaction, especially type 1 hypersensitivity, basophilia and eosinophilia. And if someone has parasitic infections, eosinophilia. So you understand why it's so important to learn because they mark, they point towards the causes of disturbance in the body in different type of pathological conditions, different type of white cells may be increased in the blood. Is that clear? Now before we really go into detail, I would like to discuss that from where these cells come, especially first we'll talk about from where the granulocytes come. All of you know the granulocytes like other blood cells are produced in the bone marrow, right? And the process by which the granulocytes are produced in the bone marrow, that process is called granulopoiesis granulopoiesis. So now we will talk about granulopoiesis. Granulocytes are produced of course in the bone marrow, red bone marrow or yellow bone marrow? Yellow bone marrow is inactive. So the, all the granulopoieses or leukopoieses or erythropoieses, they must be going on in red bone marrow. Because that bone marrow which is actively producing uh, blood cells, that is called red bone marrow. So we say hemopoiesis is a feature of red bone marrow, right? And in, in a newborn, which bones are having red bone marrows? In a newborn, which bones have red bone marrow? All bones. In the newborn, all bones are having red bone marrow. As your age increases, red bone marrow shrink from the periphery and settles into only in the remains in the central area. In my age, I think red bone marrow must be in the axial skeleton, in the skull. I mean, not within the skull. There is brain. I hope. Uh, <laughs> yeah, this is very important. Later on, you say Dr. Najib is having red bone marrow in his skull, right? So actually, in skull bones, I must say there is a red bone marrow. There should be. I hope and in the vertebra and in the ribs and uh, in the pelvic bones and ends of the long bones and short bones of the hands and feet. They should have red bone marrow, right? But in a newborn, all the bone marrow is red. And in my age, after 18, of course I'm more than 18. Uh, I should reveal my age, it's more than 18. So uh, after around 18, then bone marrow uh, remains red only in the axial skeleton and peripheral skeleton become yellow bone marrow. Is that right? Now, let's see that how granulopoiesis occur, right? 